world. <laughs> and finally this week, Turkey. A country, a bird, and the meanest thing you could call someone in 1956. <laughs> this week, Turkey's leader, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, caused a big stir in Germany. Chancellor Angela Merkel has accepted a request to prosecute a comedian who mocked the Turkish president on German television. Now, Erdogan had said that he wanted to take legal action against this comedian because this comedian read a poem on air that made very, very strong remarks against Erdogan. He wants to lock someone up over a poem. Why doesn't he just do what the rest of us do about poetry? Listen to it politely because it's how Sarah has chosen to cope with the divorce. <laughs> If you are wondering how on earth an insulting poem can be against the law, it turns out Erdogan may have dug up a 19th century German law stating, anyone who is guilty of an insult to a sovereign or regent of a state shall be punished by imprisonment. And for the record, let me just say, I am very glad America does not have a similar law, or I would be in a maximum security prison right now, and I would not thrive there. But... Angela Merkel is in a bit of a bind here because clearly this is a free speech issue. But the problem is Erdogan is critical to Europe's plan for processing migrants and refugees. And it seems he has an incredibly thin skin. For Recep Tayyip Erdogan, satire is no laughing matter. Since he became president in 2014, almost 2,000 cases have opened for insulting the president. It's true. Nearly 2,000 legal cases have been opened since he took office. That's more than three a day. And some of these cases have been unbelievably petty. In October, a physician lost his job and now faces a two-year prison sentence for sharing a meme suggesting Erdogan's facial expressions resemble golems, which, by the way, <laughs> they just do. That's not a criticism. It's not even a joke. It's just a biological fact. And... Last April, a journalist received a suspended prison sentence simply for liking a Facebook post that insulted Erdogan. And liking something on Facebook should never be a crime unless maybe you like a co-worker's beach photo at 3 a.m. That is <laughs> the one exception because that is creepy. And look, Erdogan is the one at fault here. He makes it way too easy to make fun of him. For example, in 2014, he gave an interview in which he said this. You can see that what Israel does to Palestine, to Gaza right now, has surpassed what Hitler did to them. Holy shit! That is very offensive to Israel. And honestly, it's a little offensive to Hitler, who has to be thinking, are you fucking kidding me? What do I have to do? And that same year, he caused a bit of a stir with this remark. You cannot bring women and men into equal positions. That is against nature. Now, that statement is bad enough, but he said it at an international conference for women. <laughs> the only way that could have been any worse is if he then said, but that's enough of me. Everybody, please welcome Grammy-winning recording artist Chris Brown. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies, Chris Brown. And, and when Erdogan tried to smooth things over after that, it didn't go so great. Erdogan did try to offer a compliment of sorts. He says he used to kiss his mother's feet because they smelled of paradise. Oh. oh. Even at an international foot fetishist convention, <laughs> the sentence, my mom's feet smell like paradise, is going to get you some weird looks. Erdogan is clearly not a pleasant individual, which is why it's so hard to be sympathetic when you see this actual footage of him having his balls stomped on <laughs> by a horse. Now, we've shown you that footage before, and we'll probably show you it again. Because the point is, Erdogan, if you are so anxious not to be mocked, try not suppressing speech in your country and others, and generally acting in ways that make everyone want to see you get kicked in the balls.